Hey, my name is Rod, Rod Ulrich. I'm a little distracted here because <laughs> of the dogs. And I thought they would just like sit up here with me, but they want to play ball and have treats. So, Rod Ulrich, uh, I work at Purdue this fall, fall of 2023. I am teaching ANSI 345, Animal Health Management and also ANSI 446, Companion Animal Management. So those are both upper level courses where there's mostly juniors and seniors, a lot of good thinkers, so it's always very active because, active learning, because a lot of the students have been doing animal related material and so we get to talk about what they did and they can explain to us and we all can learn. <coughs> So it's amazing. <clears throat> like for one thing, I'll tell you, Diesel, that's this guy, I'm not sure if you can see his head at all, but anyway, he reminded me that you better not have any grease at the bottom of your grill or Blackstone griddle. I have both of those, they're off screen right now, the two grills, the two different grills. But Diesel was fascinated by the grease that had dripped out of the pan, the overflowing pan under the barbecue grill and it reminded me that grease and dogs don't go together because a lot of times they might develop, depending on how much they've had, they might develop pancreatitis. So anyway, that's how you learn. Oh, that's right, pancreatitis, so be careful. Um, grease and dogs, especially dogs that are a little overweight, over their ideal weight, they're more prone to get pancreatitis, and the pancreas just goes wild. For some reason, if they get a lot of grease, and uh, anyway, so we're gonna have fun this fall. I want to introduce myself where I've been a little bit, my background, and then I'll get into specifics for each little video I make for the classes. So I was born in North Dakota, and uh, way up in the north central part of North Dakota, where some people say it's really desolate. Is it the end of the world? No, it's not the end of the world, but you can see it from there. The winters are brutal. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and you know, sometime ask me about it in class. So then, I uh, spent some early years up through third grade in Detroit, Michigan, and I have fond memories of Detroit. And sometimes people will say, oh, that's a crime-ridden town. What well, ends up being every big town now has its fair share or more than the fair share of crime. There's some wonderful people in Detroit. I have fond memories of Detroit. I uh, get back there every once in a while. I had an aunt and uncle that lived there. I always visit them. They both passed away now, so I don't get up to Detroit very often. But when I do, I always try to find some ethnic restaurants, like there's Hamtramck, uh, Michigan, which is an enclave of Detroit, and they have the best Polish food you'll ever find in the world. Um, because like this one restaurant I like to go to are owned by people that came from Poland and you know and the menu is in Polish and they have English subtitles basically for people like me but most of the people there are, are eating are Polish so anyway <clears throat> then move back uh, to North Dakota Fargo North Dakota then uh, moved to Moorhead Minnesota which is right across the river graduated from Moorhead Minnesota then uh, went back to Fargo, across the river for NDSU <coughs> for my bachelor's degree in animal sciences. I happened to pick that out thanks to my great ag teacher in high school. He said, oh, you like to learn about animals and, you know, animal sciences sounds like for you. And he was right. I stayed there for my master's degree and then went to University of Nebraska for my PhD degree. Actually went to Purdue. Uh, not, I never went to Purdue. I worked at Purdue as a postdoc for a year in beef cattle reproduction. So, and all my mentors during this whole thing did a lot of surgery. I just happened to work with programs that surgery was happening almost every day. So I got a lot of good surgical background. So then I used that when I started at Purdue, a faculty member at Purdue, <clears throat> did a lot of surgery with sheep, swine, and cattle, and so I really got a lot of great experience that way. And uh, most of it is in reproduction, 
So, you know, like for example, sheep, we electrocauterized ovarian follicles, and then put everything back, and then came back two and a half days later to see what the ovaries did, and they always grew more follicles. Ends up being, there's always follicles ready to grow. They don't have to wait a whole estrous cycle. Uh, it's called waves of follicular development. Anyway, I've been at Purdue for many, many years. A lot of good experience, met some terrific students, and some I'm still in contact with. I mean, it's just, they're wonderful. Uh, next month, well, so this is actually, tomorrow is August 1st. So in September, a student that I had as in my freshman class, Lorene, her and her family are coming up and we're spending some time together on a weekend in September. They live in the Indy area. <clears throat> so, great. Have other people coming, uh, Joyce, didn't get into vet school when she tried at Purdue. She was undergraduate here. She went to Cornell, uh, studied parasites for a year or two. Can't remember. I think she's got her master's degree and she got into Purdue vet school. So now, later this summer, which I know there's not many days left, her and I and my wife will go out to eat and she'll tell us about what she did since the last time I talked to her. <coughs> anyway, looking forward to seeing everybody this fall. Um, fall is always more energetic than January. You know, fall, a lot of people have been gone this summer. They're ready to get back to learning. Um, and in January, it's kind of like, okay, I got it burned out in fall. So it's not as energetic in the spring semester, but that's okay. So it's been fun seeing you. Maybe one other thing I'll say about, uh, I did say about the bottom of the, the, the grease on the bottom of the barbecue grill. Uh, treats, dog treats. No matter how big or small the dog is, the treats should be all the same size. Have you ever gone into a pet store and they have the company has a treat this long for small dogs, medium-sized dogs, and then a big dog gets like half a pound of I don't know what. That shouldn't be. All treats should be very like, these are tasty. They're almost like, they smell like steak. And then a bigger dog, can just have more treats. But treats should always be all the same size. Right, Diesel? Diesel's a good boy. Yeah, and Annie's a good girl. Annie's spicy. So anyway, uh, I think I'm gonna end there and then I'll make a little part for Anti-345, stick it on the back here, and then I'll make another part for 446 and stick that on the back of this introduction. So I'll have two separate videos for the two different classes. And then um, if you have some email, if you have some questions, email me because I'll, I'll in the videos I'll say, oh, maybe think about doing this or here's, a, here's something. Um, what, do you have any knowledge that can help us on that? You'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, talk to you guys later. You guys did it pretty good. You're pretty hot, huh? Are you ready to go inside for some water? Yeah, ready? Ready? Oh, diesel, diesel. Annie! Okay, let's go. Okay, well, here we are for the second part of the video. The first part was where I was outside with the dogs on the picnic table. I did notice there was some airplane noise overhead, but the microphone I had was very sensitive, so it picked up some of that stuff, which is fine. So I want to talk about ANSI 345 for this fall, fall 2023. It's entitled Animal Health Management. We have about 25 students. Most of them are juniors and seniors. And I've had a lot of fun with this course. You'll see what the syllabus allows you to do. So there's a lot of things you can learn on your own. You can, you know, for example, if you're a beef cattle person, you can focus a lot on beef cattle and learning, may, maybe learn things you didn't know. Or if you're into horses or poultry or whatever, as long as it's about animal health management. And we usually confine our animals to the domesticated animals, right? Uh, dogs, cats, turkeys, 
chickens, horses, all those kind of animals. We tend, you know, dogs and cats are for sure, I said. Anyway, tend not to do all the pets like reptiles, although maybe one of the things you do could do would be something with pets, but you'll see how that will work out here in a little bit. So now I'm going to introduce the syllabus, which is on the website, and the website will be uh, stated here. So again, we're and at uh, ANSI 345, let me get my laser pointer going here. And I'm doing, uh, yeah, there it is. I've got, it's a program I've used before. It's called Explain Everything, except they were bought by another company. And so they've changed things, I think for the better, but I haven't used it since they've like really revamped everything. Anyway, we want to just talk about the principles of animal health management. I see yeah, my laser pointer. If I click, it disappears. I like that. And if I click, it reappears again. They've done a lot of things on this website, uh, this uh, explained everything software. But um, so if I seem shocked when something happens, it's like, wow, I didn't know they did that before. Anyway, I'm Rod. We The first part of the video outside, we talked about where I've been, what I've done. I've been blessed with working with animals ever since I was knee-high to a grasshopper, really. Um, yeah, so anyway, some of the course topics <clears throat> are listed here. That doesn't mean these are all the things we'll do. It's just some of the things that you can make videos on and or and we'll we'll be you'll see where this happens it's but you can determine a lot <clears throat> by um what you want to do i noticed down here parasites and that reminds me of one of my past students who applied to vet school didn't get in then went to a cornell to study parasites and i think she, joyce got her master's degree and she's starting the vet school back here at purdue and man it'd be interesting to have her come and maybe give us an update on what parasites are best to study and so forth and so on so now i'm going to move this up but there's a lot of topics we can do and i'm trying to find my laser pointer too like man look at this the design of medical experiments that's one thing you should maybe um, think about is taking stat classes that also not only talk about general stats, but the design of experiments. Man, I'll tell you what, sometimes people have done terrible studies. They don't really realize it. And all the results are what's called confounded, confounded, C-O-N-F-O-U-N-D-E-D, confounded. That means the results really aren't showing anything because they didn't take all uh, the things that are known into account. Anyway, so I'm going to, what I'm doing here is I'm flipping between my laser pointer and my ability to raise the syllabus up. So you have to bear with me a little bit. Okay, so let's get that up there. Now I'll go back here. <coughs> Sorry. So there's our website. There's our main website. And I'll show you uh, a screenshot of what that looks like when you get into it for 345. Anyway, here's something really important. On the schedule of classes, and it's, you know, when you're registered for it, this will be in your personal schedule. It talks about the course meeting Tuesday and Thursday over in the pol uh, not poultry building, but forestry building from noon to 115. It's like a power hour. You know, it's a three credit course. So you got an hour and a half, an hour and a half. <coughs> Sorry about that. But make sure you see this on Tuesdays. We're going to be in Crichton Hall 1011. That's that big lecture hall. The only general classroom in the building just on the east end near the main office we're going to meet there tuesdays but on thursday you're going to have enough to do 
and you'll see that later, that I'm going to give you that time to work on yourself. So there'll be reading to do. You'll see that. Um, and so Thursday is, you know, at least an hour and a half of your own stuff, but you'll be doing it asynchronously. That means you don't have to go to the website at Thursday at noon. So Tuesdays become very important because that's the only day we meet face to face. That's not the only day you work on the course. Hopefully you work a little on the course five, six days a week, take some day off. But anyway, so there's my main website. There are some backup websites. So I would say rodalrich.com is the most up-to-date one. rodalrich2.com is the second most up-to-date. And then the third up-to-date is rodalrich.bravehost.com. And anybody that's run our website, you know, you have to FTP files and make sure links aren't broken and all that. I do a pretty good job, a current job of rodalrich.com. Try to send things to rodalrich2.com. Sometimes this Brave Host one gets behind a little bit, but if somebody says, hey, that's not there. And the reason I've got three is because there's really no reason not to get to the material. These are three different servers in three different states. Uh, if you've ever worked with Brightspace, which you know, and our grades will be in there, Brightspace is only one location. If it goes down, there's no backup. You can't, like, they'll say, oh, go to this place. No. Uh, if Brightspace, Brightspace is down, it's down. And you're SOL. So that's why I've got a couple other backups here. So how does a person earn points in this class? Well, we're going to have eight in-class quizzes <clears throat> that take place on Tuesdays. Remember, Tuesdays are the only day we meet face-to-face, -face, at least as a group. Uh, I'll be telling you how I have hours in that room for open office hours, too. And you'll get 200 points for eight quizzes times 25 points. Then you're going to be having written summaries of assigned readings and videos. And that's going to add up to 400 points. So you've got in-class quizzes, 200 points. Then written summaries that I'll have to see that you either bring in and hand in or submit to Brightspace. Probably what I'll do is have you upload them to Brightspace. Then I can go in there and... Brightspace is pretty good about, okay, stamping everything. Did it get turned in on time? Blah, blah, blah. And here's another big chunk of points. You'll make two videos on topics that you select. And I think that's the maybe big thing here. You select these topics that are related to animal health management, and you make little videos. And I've got some examples of titles of, of what students have done in the past. So <clears throat> I think in the future, a lot of you will be training people. We will be supervising people. And it's really kind of neat to know how to make a video, put it up to YouTube. That's where some of the, the what I'll put up to, some of these will go up to YouTube. <clears throat> I'm backlogged a little bit from last fall's course, but I'm still working on it. Anyway, so... But here's where you can customize your knowledge, okay? If you like sheep, do two topics on sheep and try to learn something that you hadn't learned before. Now I've got to go over and do my little hand up here. Okay, and so finally, here's the course grade. I'm not going to go through this very much. But anyway, uh, we do the 90, 80, 70 system, but I also do the plus or minus. So... You know, if you got 94% of the points, you have earned yourself an A. Okay, so I'm going to show you two screenshots from the Internet that I just took. This is my website, rodarch.com, and you'll see this. And what I want to point out, is that to get to the courses, you'll see this 
link here says courses and you'll click on it then underneath there when it shows up another page you'll click on animal health management in this case i tend not to use numbers because the website is open to the world <clears throat> and course numbers mean nothing to them titles are more informative um but so there's a lot of stuff here if you're interested in what dna what dogs look like in their DNA tests, that's here. Uh, I have a blog where I talk about things, current things of animals. There's my YouTube uh, channel link there. Brightspace, there's a lot of biology links here. That's maybe where I'm running a little behind. There's maybe two, 300 links when that page shows up. And some of them... The links aren't working because if you've ever done anything with the web, as soon as somebody changes a name of something or they move a file to a different folder, then that's lost to you if you have the old name. Anyway, so there's that. <clears throat> Sorry, got a sticky throat. I'm going to put that away now and show you what comes up when you do click on animal health management so here's our here's the page that shows up i should say and there's a syllabus link here which i already showed you the syllabus but you know there it is and then home takes you back to my main website so here's what happens every week i'll make these reading assignments <clears throat> so overview of antiseptics alcohols as antiseptics, tincture of iodine, which is very interesting. Um, anyway, autoclave, and then EO, that stands for ethylene oxide, a gas uh, sterilizing agent that works good on things that can't be put in an autoclave. Autoclaves are high pressure and temperatures that sterilize material. Ethylene oxide is a very poisonous gas. And when we do meet that first week and talk about all these things, I'll talk about how some neighborhood in North Chicago uh, who was downwind from a company that did a lot of EO sterilization, they have like a cluster of cancer cases. Um they didn't know this company was exhausting EO into the air and, <clears throat> sorry, it gets complicated. And then prions are these misshaped proteins that aren't destroyed by autoclaving and they cause crazy things in the brain like mad cow disease for cows um, I think it's the same organism or similar, I should say, for the deer population, chronic wasting disease. If I remember right, that's the name. And then these things also affect humans. And I'll talk about stories how a brain surgeon was working on patient A. They didn't know that person had prions. And then the instruments were sterilized. And then the next patient comes in for more brain surgery and they didn't realize these prions don't get destroyed by autoclaves. And so the next patient ended up getting a disease from patient one, which is really crazy. And the other thing about this is there's such a long incubation period that it took incredible amount of detective work to figure out how patient one infected patient two. So anyway, You'll see these. I think what I'm going to do then is have a little convention where I might put an asterisk by one or two articles. Because remember in the syllabus, you were going to do 20 summaries. And so I might for each week pick out one or two or at least one. We have what, about 15, 14 weeks in the class. So between one and two of these articles will have to be um, designated as you write up a summary and submit it to Brightspace. We'll work all this out. But you might say, why would I read the other ones then? But remember, we have in-class quizzes too. 
So <clears throat> it all kind of bundles together and you'll be working on your videos. So you can see how we're going to be busy. But again, a lot of the course is going to be determined by what you want to learn. So I like that part. Okay, so I'm almost done here because what I want to show you now is the example topics of what videos people have made in the past, students have made in the past. So I'm going to get this little um, screenshot out of my YouTube channel, which is going on right now. So this is like just was clipped. So in the last 48 hours, I've had about a thousand views. So that's 500 a day of different videos. And sometimes during the school year, when everybody's in school, that might creep up to 1,500, 1,600. So that's 800 a day, whatever. But I'm going to move this up and show you titles of videos that students have made. Not all of them are made by the students. Some are made by me. And so this first one, I'm trying to figure out what's happening here. But And you can go to my YouTube channel and look at this. Bruiser the Bearded Dragon is eating this giant worm. And somehow in the last two days, there's been 177 views of that. People are viewing it. I don't know. I, I don't think that's that great of a video. But if you don't know about bearded dragons and what they can eat, maybe that's what it is. But here's an example of a student topic. <clears throat> a student made this for this class years ago. I can't remember. Maybe a year or two or three, whatever. Canine lymphoma. I guess there it is right there in 19. In the last two days, 57 views. That's pretty good. Ascites in dogs, 48 views. It, the number, here's one that's always amazing. This is about horses, and it's called Suspensory Ligament Injuries in Horses. The title, the entire title doesn't show up. Um, I remember it was made by a girl in one of my class, in this class. And look at that. It's going to be, what is that? That's five years from now, five years ago, right? <clears throat> Getting 37 hits every two days. So that's darn close to 20 a day. Well, here's the, here's the deal with this one. And if you go to that video and click on it, it'll show you the total number of views it's had. And I think it's like 40,000. So one of my past students made this video, which is very good. And it's been getting all these sick hits forever. Ever since we posted it, I think like every time an hour and a half goes by, it gets a view on average. So it's crazy. Here's a video I made on carbon monoxide detectors. I, it's one of my, should I say pet peeves? I'm not sure. Anyway, a lot of people are dying from carbon monoxide poisoning. Yeah, they'll go on vacation someplace and they don't realize there are no detectors around carbon monoxide. That's CO. And they'll die in their sleep because it's odorless, it's tasteless. You can't see it. It's really rather wicked. Anyway, it's one of my <clears throat> pet peeves because Buy a detector or two. I can tell you which ones work good. When you travel, take them with you. When you have them in your house, take them with you. Okay. Okay. So I just want to show you one more screenshot of videos that are on my YouTube channel. And most of them have been made by students. Um, here we go again. There's that carbon monoxide. That's how we ended that other one. Then somebody made one on mastitis and dogs. All these titles, Cherry Eye, this one's mine, Reproduction 3, Gross Anatomy of, I think it says Domestic Animals, Gross Anatomy of, uh, might be Companion Animals. Anyway, you can see all these topics. Most of the topics are made by students. Hyperthyroidism in cats, perianal fistulas in dogs, bovine embryo transfer, that's from one of these students. And you can kind of see there's 17, 18, as far as the 19, 20, 2020. 
I am backlogged. I think I got most of the students from last fall's 345 yet to go through. Uh, it takes a lot of time because, you know, not everybody's an expert at making a video, and I've got to decide, okay, is that one worthy to put up? Or if there's some corrections, can I correct the video without having the – well, I have the original video, I guess. It's up in Brightspace. But then I've got to, like, work on it. Sometimes I have to, like – fog out something or add another little thing at the back so it's like editing it's a lot of work okay that's my story and i'm sticking to it be fun to see you guys in class but one thing i should say is if you're working someplace and you'll say wow i could i could make a topic of this can you take some pictures sometimes sometime before you come back to class uh like Last summer, somebody was working on a hog farm, and when a pig uh, died, they did a necropsy, and this person was taking nice pictures of livers and normal things, abnormal things at this hog farm and used it for their presentation. So I guess that's one of the things I wanted to not only introduce the course, but say, hey, are there some things that you could be doing between now and and when school starts, which is, what, three weeks from now, scary thought, that you could take some pictures or ask me questions. I'll say, oh, yeah, try to do this, try to do that. It's always great when you're working with somebody that's got a lot of knowledge. You can ask them questions right there and uh, so forth and so on. So I look forward to seeing you on that Tuesday um, at noon in Crichton, 1011, not the forestry building like it says on your schedule. Okay, it's been fun. Thanks a lot.